In this section, we will be adding the file server role into our Windows Server 2022. In order to do that, let's click on the Start menu and click on Server Manager. Here on Server Manager, I'm going to click on Manage and I'm going to click Add Role and Feature. And this is going to start the Add Roles and Features wizard. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click Next. This will be a role based or feature based installation. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And next, I'm going to select the server for which I want to install this role. I'm going to leave it as default and click Next. Um, here, I want to find the file and server. So notice that if I click on File and Storage Services and I expand the file and SCSI services, and notice that I have the option to install a file server. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to go ahead and click Next and next and finally click install okay so installation succeeded i'm going to go ahead and click close if i click on file and storage services notice that i have multiple options here um, for if i click on shares for example and notice that i can create shares and manage my shares from the file server manager so I'm going to click uh, close, I'm going to close out of here and I'm going to right click on the start menu and click computer management. Here in computer management, notice that I have a share folder option. I'm going to click on it. Actually, I'm going to expand it and I'm going to click on shares. Notice that here I have three shares available and notice that every single one of these shares have a dollar sign a pen at the end and what this means is that these are hidden shares that if you browse for shares on the network you will not be able to see these shares the way to connect to these shares for example if you click on the if you type if you press on the window key and the letter r and you type the unc path providing the name the ip address of the of the system 192.168.1.5 and then you provide the name of the share, which is admin dollar sign, and you press enter. It will open that share in the file explorer. Okay, it will let you access that share. Of course, you need credentials on that system in order to access the share. But you can do the same thing for on the C drive. Instead of admin dollar sign, you can type C dollar sign. And it's going to give you access to the uh, to the computer uh, to the uh, operating system partition. Uh, but in uh, this one is a an IP, the IPC hidden shares. It gets automatically created once uh, you enable file sharing on the system. So in order to create a share, I'm going to right click and I'm going to click New Share. This is going to open the Create uh, Share Folder Wizard. I'm going to go ahead and click next for the path i'm going to click browse it is a good practice that you create all your shares in a different partition other than your windows server uh, installation partition so i'm going to scroll down and i'm going to select the e drive i'm going to go ahead and click ok and here i'm going to create a share call um, as a matter of fact before I do that. I want to open the file manager and click on the E drive and right click on it, create a folder, and I'm going to call it share. Okay. Uh, this this is where all my file shares are going to reside. It's a way to have your data in a centralized location. I'm going to do share and then I'm going to create a share called human resource okay hr and i'm going to go ahead and click next it says the system cannot find the, fo the file the folder i'm going do you want to create it yes for the share name i'm going to name it um, human resource um, i'm going to leave it 
uh, as human resource description human resource and I'm going to go ahead and click next uh, select the kind of permission you want for the share folder I'm going to select uh, I'm going to leave it as default we will be configuring this um, afterwards so I'm going to go ahead and click finish and click finish all right so that share has been created notice that this is the name of the share as, to, as it is going to show up on the network and this is the actual path so if I right click on it notice that I can open the share in the file explorer I can stop the share or I can view the properties for that share so I'm going to click on properties and notice here that in the general tab uh, by default I'm allowing the maximum uh, users to connect I can click on allow this number of users and specify how many simultaneously uh, simultaneous users are allowed to connect on this chair but I'm going to leave it as default and next I'm going to click on share permissions and notice that by default uh, when you create a chair the everyone's group uh, has been added to the share so uh, the way you assign permissions to users and group on a share is by controlling the rights and permission uh, to a specific user or group through the security tab using NTFS permission. This allows for more control over the group or user. Okay, so what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to remove the everyone's group. I'm going to click on the group and click, and click remove. And then I'm going to click add. And here I'm going to search for the users group just to make sure that uh, the users who are member of the users group are only allow access to these shares instead of the everyone group so I'm going to go ahead and click check name click OK and I'm going to go ahead and give full control on that share the effective permission on a specific share are a combination of the share permissions and the security permissions so usually the most restrictive permission is the effective permission which which means that if a user has full control on the share permission but only has re-control on the security uh, permission the effective security the effective permission for that user is re-permission so I'm going to go ahead and click apply and then I'm going to click on the security tab and I'm going to make sure that the users group has read and execute permission and notice that this permission are grayed out and what this means is that this group is inheriting those permissions from the parent from the parent folder okay so if you want to change this permission go ahead and click edit and you can click on the groups here and make modifications here but I'm going to leave it as default and go ahead and click OK another way that you can create shares uh, on the network is by using the file explorer so for example if I open the file explorer and let's say I'm going to click on the uh, data drive and I'm going to double click on the shares um, directory um, if I wanted to create another share for, let's say for example that instead of using uh, computer management I want to use the file explorer I can right click on it and click new select new and click folder let's say that I'm going to name this folder um, engineering and if I wanted to share the content of this directory I'm going to right click on it and go to properties and here where it says sharing I'm going to click on advanced sharing and then I'm going to select share this folder okay so by default uh, the, the, sh the share name, the name that this share is going to have on the network is going to be engineering. You can change this. Um, so you can change this if you want, but I'm going to leave it as default. And, and here at the bottom, you can click on permissions. And I'm going to, again, remove the everyone's group. And I'm going to add the users group. And check name okay it's basically the same process but done uh, using a different interface I wanted to show you both um, so you know how to do it um, and so I'm going to allow full control I'm going to go ahead and click apply okay and finally I'm going to go ahead and click OK and now I'm going to go in the security tab 
By the way, notice that this is the UNC path uh, of the network share. Um, so when you when you when uh, client computers and users are going to connect to this share on the network, this is the path that they're going to have to use. So you then you can highlight it and copy from here. Do Windows R and Ctrl V to paste it and open it in the file explorer. All right, so that is a quick way that you can access this share. So now I'm going to click on the security tab, and here's the the, secu the uh, users group, and they uh, have read and execute, list uh, folder content, and read permission. So I'm going to go ahead and click close. All right, so next, um, let's go over our Windows 11 client computer and map the share folder. In order to map a share folder, I'm going to open the file explorer. Okay, if you click on this PC and you expand um, the drives available, and then you come here and click on the three dots, you should be able to have a map network drive available. Click on it, then assign a drive letter I'm going to leave it as default and provide the UNC path to the network share that we created. I'm going to say backslash backslash DC1, actually it's DC01, uh, forward slash, and I believe it's human resource. I'll reconnect and sign in and use different credentials. Remember, up to this point, um, our network is part of a war group, so uh, um, administration of resources is completely decentralized, so we need to authenticate using user credentials on the remote server. I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And now it's asking me for a username and password on the local server. So I'm going to say administrator and enter the password. Remember credentials and click OK. And notice that my human resource share is available here on uh, inside this computer. 